learn about all these things and it's like, okay, where do I, where do I start? Right. There's so many different elements to this and they all interact. Right. And so it's like, I found over time that I was doing a lot of the things that I thought were right. And they were good quality training elements, but it wasn't helping specific individuals. And it's because it's not what they need, right? Maybe somebody else needed that strategy, but that person didn't need that. They needed more position, right? Um, I had a linebacker who I've worked with for a long time who, uh, you know, he, he had a history of, of knee issues, issues there. 600 pound squatter came from a, a, a division one program that was very heavy into the lifts and into getting really strong, which was great, but it stole so much of his excursion range of motion that getting in and out of his cuts was like molasses, right? And so not only was he coming off an injury, but he was also a lot slower than he needed to be. And, and at first I was like, this guy's a 600 pound squatter. Like his jump should be higher. Like his cuts should be faster. And my, you know, my strength training mindset was very much like, man, what's going on here. And then you start to realize like the guy has no hip excursion. His tissues are incredibly stiff. Um, you know, a counter movement and vertical jump is not enough force and momentum to deform his tissues. And a cut, when he goes to cut, he's getting stuck in that cut because he can't express the velocity to position uh, his leg and get out of it, right? The external rotation, the expansion to get into and out of a cut that's necessary. So he's just getting buried into the ground all day, every day. Um, and that's necessitating some compensatory strategies at different joints that has led to pain and injuries. The guys with like big toe issues, knee issues, um, things like that. It's like, okay, maybe this guy doesn't need to get stronger right now. Maybe we got to get him some more available range. We got to work the skill and then we got to develop the elasticity that he probably doesn't have in a variety of ways. So for him, it was like, you know, we're going to do ply general plyometric progressions, but we're also going to teach you along the way to actually capture a yielding strategy because right now it's just too much stiffness. And I use the, the image I get in my mind is like an iron rod being thrown at the ground, right? You like hit the ground with that iron rod. It just kind of bounces right there and doesn't go anywhere, right? But if you hit a really filled up basketball on the ground, like that ball bounces hard and it goes all over the place. And for me, he was the iron rod who was just so stiff, so compressed and so restricted that he couldn't get out of a cut. He couldn't pr uh, produce this yielding strategy in a counter movement jump or in a loading phase of a cut to get out of it. And so that necessitated a different training strategy. Now, if you're working with younger kids, there's a lot more on your plate, right? Like sometimes you improve force production um, if they've never trained before and all of a sudden position cleans up, right? Motor skill cleans up because they just got stronger relative to their own body mass. And I had a few of those kids as well recently where it's like, you know, you got a 13 year old hockey kid who wants to get faster, right? Mom and dad says we need more agility. We need more speed to, to make the high school team, but you assess him and he's got no range of motion available to him. And he's never trained before and he's kind of like floppy um, and he started doing change of direction work with him. And it's just like he's it's above his current level of capabilities. Right. You can see him get stuck in the cut. You see him sway and dump. Um, you see him unable to handle the forces. So he'll hit the, uh, his final foot contact. He'll stop. But instead of being able to actually handle that load and then get back out, he's got to spin his wheels in place and then go back out of it. Um, you watch him sprint. And this is like, this is my favorite one, which is like watching them or listening to them sprint. And you can literally heal, hear them just fall to the ground every single step. Like they're, they're not sprinting, they're falling. And they're just trying to keep themselves from falling on their face because they can't handle the forces and velocity. Um, and so, yeah, we work on change of direction skills. We'll go through skip progressions. Um, we'll go through linear sprinting. We'll do sled work. Uh, we'll do chase games with younger kids. We'll do change of direction drills, all of that. But We'll put a bigger emphasis on some of their jumping and landing capabilities where they're going to have to start accepting force and producing force. Um, we're going to put a bigger emphasis on doing a goblet squat with really well, right? Doing body weight exercises like push ups and rows, doing a good split squat, and actually teaching them at these slower speeds to build up their force production. And lo and behold, a month later, all of a sudden their movement capabilities are 10 times better. And we haven't done anything that's focused on, like, you know, really like low level activities, like position, we just got them stronger and took them through a full excursion, a range of motion um, and things cleaned up on their own. You, you got them stronger, not necessarily in a weight room sense, but in a movement sense. Yeah. And, but you know what? They also got stronger in a weight room sense, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, they yeah. went, they went that from, wasn't, that wasn't the main focus, right? I mean, it was, it was, it was getting him to move better, which allowed him 
to move better in the weight room, which allowed him to lift more weight. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's the key is like figuring out what, and, and again, it's two different things. So it's like, maybe for the high level athlete, who's too stiff, it's getting them to capture that yielding strategy. So maybe we're doing some sort of band assisted squatting activity, right? Maybe we're doing a box squat. Uh, maybe we're doing something that allows them like a drop clean or something like that, where the emphasis is on giving way and accepting force quickly and being able to go through that full excursion. And maybe that actually increases their, their strength because now they have a better yielding capability to store and release elastic energy, right? Which makes them able to produce more force quicker. With the other kid, it's like, I want to see them be able to show me a good goblet squat through the fullest excursion of range of motion with control. And now we're training. I mean, this is where to me, like the old adage of, um, you know, good mobility training is strength training through a full range of motion. You know what I mean? Like when you have that, that sudden, that actually becomes true because now I can improve this athlete's squat and their load propulsion test, which on day one looked awful uh, because he's just never trained before, right? He's never had to control his body under external load through different ranges of motion. He simply just played sports and gotten whatever done needs to be done. Um, and now it's like, okay, I'm going to ask you with this dumbbell in your hands, can you show me a full excursion in, in a squat where you can control your rib cage and your pelvis you can keep your hip, knee, and ankle on train tracks. You can stay heel heavy as you change levels. Um, and so, yeah, like they, that improves their movement. That was the primary goal. But along the way, they're now lifting heavier weights. They're stronger relative to their body mass in some of the basic like body weight assessments we do. We'll look at, you know, push-up capabilities, pull-up capabilities, or, you know, just squatting with a certain percentage of your body weight with a goblet dumbbell for a young kid. And then you throw them back on the jump mat and they do a vertical jump. And they're jumping substantially higher, right? And we have really haven't done that much jumping. It's like they needed that force production um, uh, strategy. They needed to be able to understand how to, to manage their body against external load. And now we're getting neural adaptations as well that allows them to produce more force quicker. So it's just figuring out like what this person is limited by and what they need. And then you train that, you reassess, and you go at it again.